Let's discuss the different causes of why your car shuts off while driving, slowing down, or coming to a stop. We'll break down each potential issue in detail and provide tips on how to diagnose the problem so you can potentially fix it yourself. Before diving into the causes, first check your fuel level. Fuel less than quarter of fuel tank's capacity makes it difficult for fuel pump to supply fuel consistently under right pressure. So sometimes, refilling gas tank can fix car stalling issue. Now, let's discuss each cause behind car stalling issue. Number one, corroded terminals and loose battery connections. Loose battery connections and corroded battery terminals can create electrical interruptions. It's like trying to power your household appliances with a frayed extension cord. Loose battery connections contain an air gap which has very high resistance. It results in excessive voltage drop which will prevent sufficient current flow to different engine components like sensors, fuel injectors, and valves. Moreover, corrosion of battery terminals creates an additional layer on terminals which affects the resistance of the electrical connection in the same way. If sensors don't get sufficient voltage to operate, it will disturb optimum engine operation. Fuel injectors will not inject fuel at the right time. Oxygen sensor will not be able to measure amount of oxygen in exhaust. MAF sensor will not be able to detect amount of air entering the engine. All these factors will collectively result in car stalling problems. To test loose battery terminals, check if you can wiggle or swivel them even when tightened down. This indicates a poor connection. Next, connect a voltmeter to the positive battery terminal and ground. With the engine running, the voltage should read very close to the battery's rated voltage or higher. If the voltage drops significantly when turning on electrical loads like headlights and blower motor, it indicates a high resistance in the battery terminal connection. Also using multimeter, measure the resistance between the negative battery post and the cable end. Voltage higher than 0.2 volts means that battery has corroded terminals or loose connection. Number two, alternator problems. Alternator converts the mechanical energy of an engine into electrical energy. The alternator is just like a generator that is run by the crankshaft via a serpentine belt. Your battery is being charged as long as engine is running. If the alternator is bad and not charging the battery, your engine will eventually stop running due to low voltage at battery terminals. For a proper test of the alternator, your engine should start. When you start the engine, the voltage across the terminals of the battery should be around 13.7 volts. If the voltage is less than 12.7 volts, it means alternator could be bad. To inspect a seized alternator with the serpentine belt removed from the alternator pulley, try to manually rotate the alternator pulley in both directions by hand. A seized alternator will not turn. If alternator is turning, you can measure voltage at its B terminal. This terminal is directly connected to battery. The voltage at this terminal should be around 12 to 14.5 volts. Also check that wire connecting B terminal of alternator to positive terminal of battery is in good condition. If it has a break in it, it won't supply current to the battery. Number three, bad camshaft and crankshaft position sensors. Camshaft and crankshaft sensors measure the position and speed of their respective shafts. They make sure the fuel injector and spark plug work at the right time in the engine. Malfunctioning camshaft and crankshaft sensors send the wrong information to the PCM. This causes problems with the ignition timing of the engine. This will result in the engine misfire. As a result, your car may shut off while driving as the engine has a hard time burning the fuel properly and keeping the speed right. Testing a crankshaft position sensor. If your vehicle has a Hall Effect crankshaft sensor, it will generate voltage of either 0 or 5 volts in square waveform. As crankshaft teeth pass through the sensor, it generates voltage signal of 5 volts. As it moves away, the voltage is 0. In case of magnetic crankshaft sensor, the voltage output changes between minus 5 volts and 5 volts. Number 4. Bad MAF sensor. The mass airflow sensor measures how much air goes into the engine. It tells the ECU how much fuel injection is required. If the MAF sensor is dirty or broken, it gives the wrong information to the ECU. This makes the air and fuel mixture wrong, which means the engine doesn't undergo efficient combustion. It might feel weak, have trouble speeding up, or even stop running. The ECU might turn on a light to show there's a problem. To check if the MAF sensor is bad, you can use a multimeter to check the output voltage of the MAF sensor. When you increase RPM, the voltage should increase from 1 volt to 1.7 volts. You can try cleaning the MAF sensor using a brake cleaner. It works in most cases. Number 5. Malfunctioning Throttle Position Sensor Cars with electronic throttle body have throttle position sensor instead of idle air control valve that measures actual position of throttle valve and sends signals to the ECU. In this way, ECU determines required fuel to be injected and the ignition timing. When the throttle is released during deceleration or at a stop, the throttle position sensor should signal the ECU to reduce fuel supply accordingly. If sensor is faulty, the ECU will misinterpret that throttle valve is open wider and more air is entering. As a result, it will inject more than required fuel. This will disturb air-fuel mixture and car will shut off or stall while slowing down. Testing throttle position sensor. With the engine running, use a multimeter to check the voltage at the TPS connector. The voltage should change smoothly as you open and close the throttle by pressing or releasing the gas pedal. You also need to check for corrosion signs on harness connector or loose connections. If you scan codes using OBD2 scanner, it could also show related trouble codes such as P0120 
P0121, P0122, and P0123. Number six, malfunctioning oxygen sensor. Every vehicle has two oxygen sensors. The oxygen sensor upstream of the catalytic converter measures the oxygen content in the exhaust before it enters the catalytic converter. If this sensor detects very little oxygen in the exhaust, it indicates that the air-fuel mixture is running rich. As a result, the ECU commands to inject less fuel. If the oxygen sensor is bad, it will send wrong information regarding oxygen levels in exhaust. This will disturb air-fuel ratio and may result in car stalling. To test a bad O2 sensor, use a multimeter to measure the sensor's signal voltage. Abnormal readings outside the 0.1 to 0.9 volts range are red flag. Number 7 Bad Engine Coolant Temperature Sensor The ECU also interprets signals from ECT sensor to determine ignition timing and fuel injection. When engine is cold, the ECT sensor sends signals to the ECU to inject more fuel to create rich air-fuel mixture. This allows engine to quickly reach its operating temperature. If the ECT sensor goes bad, the ECU may still continue to inject more fuel even when engine is warm. This will disturb air-fuel ratio and cause engine stalling. I have already created video on this topic, make sure to check it out. Number 8 Clogged Fuel Filter Fuel filter is located between fuel pump and fuel injectors. When fuel filter gets clogged, it creates a restriction in the fuel line, reducing the amount of fuel that can pass through it. As the engine continues to run, the demand for fuel increases, but the clogged fuel filter cannot supply enough fuel to meet this demand. This fuel starvation can cause the engine to lose power, and eventually stall. And to test fuel filter, blow into one end of the fuel filter. If air does not pass through or there is significant resistance, it may indicate that the fuel filter is clogged. Number 9. Bad Fuel Pump Cars have electric fuel pump that consistently supplies fuel under pressure. If fuel pump is unable to supply fuel consistently, the fuel pressure will decrease inside the fuel system which will cause your car to stall. To test fuel pump, turn the ignition key to the on position without starting the engine and listen for the fuel pump to activate for a few seconds. If you don't hear any noise from the pump, it may indicate a faulty pump or electrical issue. You should inspect the fuel pump fuse and relay for any signs of damage or failure. Make sure to also check for power and ground connections at the fuel pump using a multimeter. Number 10. Clogged Fuel Injector Fuel injectors are solenoid valves that open and close at a certain rate when ECU sends electric signals. Fuel injectors can get clogged with carbon deposits or get leaky due to damaged O-rings. As a result, it disrupts proper fuel delivery to the engine, causing it to stall or shut off. To test fuel injector, you can measure the resistance of each injector using multimeter. A typical resistance reading for a good injector is around 12 to 14 ohms. Using a stethoscope or a long screwdriver, you can listen for a clicking sound when the injector is operating. A lack of clicking sound may indicate a stuck or faulty injector. Moreover, dirty fuel injectors have uneven fuel spray patterns which affect efficient combustion and result in engine stalling. Number 11. Bad Fuel Pressure Regulator Fuel pressure regulator has a spring-loaded diaphragm and three ports. One port is connected to vacuum hose, second is connected to return line to fuel tank, and third receives the fuel from the fuel pump. When the engine is idling, maximum vacuum pulls the spring down, allowing excess fuel to return to the tank. At wide open throttle, the air manifold pressure compresses the spring, preventing fuel return and allowing maximum air intake. If the diaphragm in the fuel pressure regulator ruptures, it cannot maintain proper pressure. Excessively high pressure will cause fuel to drip into the cylinders instead of a controlled spray from the injectors. This results in improper air fuel mixture, inefficient combustion, and potential engine stalling. To check fuel pressure regulator, Remove the vacuum hose from the fuel pressure regulator and see if the fuel pressure stays steady or drops off. If steady, it means regulator is bad. Also, fuel smell in vacuum hose also indicates that diaphragm is ruptured. Number 12. Bad spark plugs and ignition coils. Efficient combustion demands strong spark at a right time, which is made possible by spark plugs and ignition coils. Ignition coils convert 12 voltage from battery into thousands of volts to generate spark from the spark plugs. If ignition coil is damaged or spark plugs are fouled with carbon, oil and ash deposits, the generated spark will be too weak to ignite air fuel mixture efficiently at the right time. This will result in engine stalling. Bad ignition coils and spark plugs can result in engine misfire codes that range from P0300 to P0308. Bad ignition coils can have signs of corrosion and cracks on the ignition coil. You can measure resistance across primary terminals and secondary terminals of ignition coil. Primary terminal's resistance is close to 1 ohm and secondary terminal's resistance is few thousand ohms. An infinite or open circuit reading indicates a faulty coil. Number 13. Vacuum Leaks Any air that gets into the engine without being measured by MAF sensor is a vacuum leak. If excess air enters, it disturbs air-fuel ratio which causes car to lose power and eventually shut off. Vacuum leaks occur due to faulty air intake manifold gasket, bad throttle body gasket, and cracks in vacuum hoses. You can test vacuum leaks by spraying brake cleaner on the engine bay and observe if its RPM changes. You can perform a smoke test too for detecting vacuum leaks. Number 14. Timing Belt Issues Timing belt or chain synchronizes the rotation of the camshaft and crankshaft 
to ensure that the engine's valves open and close at the correct times during each cylinder's intake, compression, power, and exhaust strokes. You should inspect the timing belt for cracks, broken or missing teeth. Bad timing belts cause compression loss due to which proper pressure is not built up inside engine cylinder which is necessary for combustion. This will cause your engine to shut off while driving. I have linked my video on symptoms of bad timing belt. Make sure to check that out. Number 15. Low oil pressure. Oil pressure is different from oil level. Low oil level or oil leaks are common causes of low oil pressure. But even if engine oil level is full, your engine may have low oil pressure due to worn out piston rings, bad oil filter and oil pump. Low oil pressure can't lubricate engine components due to which engine may seize up and stop turning over. As a result, your car will shut off while driving. Number 16. Stuck idle air control valve. Older vehicles have idle air control valve that bypasses air through a closed throttle body when engine is idling or vehicle is stopped at a stop light. Idle air control valve can get clogged with oil and carbon deposits. It can either get stuck closed or stuck open. If ICV is stuck open, excessive air will enter the engine which will disturb air fuel ratio and result in engine stalling. If ISCV is stuck closed, no air will enter engine at idle. Due to this reason, your car shuts off while coming to a stop. To test idle air control valve, unplug its harness connector and observe if the engine RPM drops significantly. If there's no change in idle speed, it means valve is clogged. Number 17. Dirty throttle body. Carbon and soot deposits may develop in throttle body that make throttle plates sticky. As a result, the throttle body hinders airflow and does not properly respond to your acceleration input. This will also cause your car to shut off while driving or slowing down. For throttle body cleaning, use an old toothbrush, sturdy blue paper towel, and brake cleaner to remove any gunk or grime that may be restricting airflow. Number 18. Low transmission fluid. Low transmission fluid can cause issues such as overheating, increased friction, and wear on internal transmission components. Transmission fluid is responsible for transmission of power from engine to transmission through torque converter. Inside valve body of automatic transmission, there are transmission solenoids that control pressure and direction of transmission fluid to engage clutches and bands. If transmission fluid level is low, it will cause transmission slipping. It will prevent smooth engaging of gears. As a result, your car will not move. Number 19. Damaged Catalytic Converter A clogged catalytic converter creates a restriction in the exhaust system and increases a back pressure. This back pressure can make it harder for the engine to push out exhaust gases, affecting the engine's ability to breathe properly. Since fresh oxygen can't easily enter engine cylinders, it will cause your car to shut off when slowing down. And to test catalytic converter, use infrared thermometer to measure temperature at different points. A temperature difference of more than 80 Fahrenheit between the inlet and outlet of the converter can indicate a clogged catalytic converter. A good catalytic converter should have an outlet temperature around 500 Fahrenheit. In some cases, a clogged catalytic converter may trigger a diagnostic trouble code like P0420, indicating a catalyst efficiency issue. Number 20. Stuck EGR Valve A stuck open EGR valve allows too much exhaust gas to recirculate back into engine cylinder. This dilutes the air-fuel mixture and makes it harder for the engine run efficiently. It will also cause power loss and engine stalling. To diagnose bad EGR valve, you can perform a vacuum test. Use a vacuum pump gauge to check if the vacuum is reaching the valve. Diaphragm when activated. No vacuum means EGR valve is stuck closed. Let me know in the comments if you've dealt with problem of car shutting off while driving and what the cause ended up being. If you want dive deeper, check the link down below in video description. Be sure to like and subscribe to Auto Corner for more auto repair tips. Thanks for watching.